to be bringing out their player, Lol Bunny. Now, Lol Bunny will be playing Jarvan the fourth here on the right hand side of your screen, facing off against Jin Air Green Wings Trace. Now, uh, of course, coming into today's matchup, uh, not a whole lot of stats for Lol Bunny, and of course, you can see on your screen uh, just the uh, the stats here for Trace. Of course, four KDA, uh, about six. 0.77 CS per minute, of course, uh, relatively uh, low just due to his role, and of course GPM about 319. That's uh, gonna do it for your stats here. But of course, talk about the champions Trace playing Morgana, and we've seen this actually several times, uh, just because players tend to play champions that they're comfortable with, not necessarily ones that are you know meta specific for the 1v1 role. So. Maybe something that, uh, you know, just to keep an eye on as far as, you know, watching your favorite players play. Of course, you can see both players in the top lane for their respective teams. Just putting up, you know, slightly different, uh, different scores. Of course, we don't have too many results for LOL Bunny, uh, just because she and I am Athena have been only playing in the LOL Ladies League. And if you guys have caught those games, they're actually not, uh, you know, not too far away from what you'd expect, even though they do, uh, do contain players of not quite, uh, not quite the OGN level. Uh, they, uh, it's, it's a fun league to watch, and uh, with the one that you can see, I am Athena uh, playing in. So, Lol Bunny, of course, representing the top lane for her team. Of course, Trace in the same situation for Jin Air, and uh, you know, Jin Air as a whole, uh, a team that's actually been having a lot of success. They're currently in second place, tied with SK Telecom T1, but with a much better record. I think they've actually won two more games than uh, SKT have this split uh, for a 10 and 5 record. Of course, GE Tigers, the team narrowly ahead of them. But uh, yeah, Jin Air have actually had a really great uh, series, great season this year. And uh, even an incredible miracle, uh, previously down way at the bottom of the roster, have brought it back to a score of 3 and 3. Now, uh, this, the versus score is actually in favor of IM in this regard. Uh, I am with a 1-0 victory over the Green Wings, so actually kind of impressive to see. Uh, not necessarily something that you'd expect given their standings, but while those games are 5v5 records from OGN, we can actually see this game uh, being decided here. We'll be right back in the game. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Solo King 1v1 Korean tournament here featuring all of your favorite players from champions this season. My name is Rapid, and I hope you guys are uh, going to enjoy our last best of three of the day. Trace facing off against Lol Bunny, female team uh, I Am Athena being represented here versus, of course, Jin Air Green Wings. Trace, uh, you know, top leader by profession, may have, uh, you know, been playing around with some top lane Morgana, but uh, we've seen all kinds of crazy picks here. The AD and Nivea that uh, I believe it was Pilot brought out earlier. I have no words for exactly what that series was versus Watch, but I, I, I don't know. There's, there's some things that you just can't explain, so I'm just not going to. But uh, either way, at least for the time being, Lol Bunny versus Trace, who you can see winning the dance-off competition in the mid lane. Already getting an early advantage, getting, uh, you know, the, the reflexes going, the blood pumping. Spinning endlessly in circles and never getting dizzy. The real OP superpower, uh, as far as this game is concerned. So, uh, let's talk about differences between both players, uh, I guess rather similarities. Both starting with Flash and Teleport, so... Respecting the flash to be able to, at least for Morgana, avoid the damage from that knockup. Uh, you know, Morgana, traditionally you want to use that black shield to avoid, um, you know, magic damage. Uh, but here it's primarily going to be to avoid CC. So the knockup, essentially the only form of CC of crowd control here for uh, uh, for Jarvan. But Trace, you know, winning the push war is uh, ahead 5-2 in CS. And of course, a lot of CS is going to be denied here at turret. Forcing your opponent to last at a turret, especially early on. Uh, a very, very effective strategy of getting yourself ahead in the CS count, which is a victory condition. 
as well as I head in on, uh, you can see, uh, CS and levels. Level 2 hit already here for Trace. Now, Trace should skill up his Dark Binding at this point. Dark Binding into Tormented Soil represents a ton of damage. And in fact, that is exactly the, uh, the skill order that Trace has gone. Lol Bunny just now hitting that level 2. Goes for the, uh, of course, Banner of Command. Of course, not the item. It's actually the uh, I own uh, the uh, Demacian standard. It's like a banner of command, I guess. But uh, oh, dark binding used for uh, for last hitting. They're probably not working as intended. But uh, yeah, there's some extra attack speed being uh, you know brought out by that banner. An early recall back to base here. That's a little bit uh, a little bit interesting. And you probably will see only just the Dorian's ring being bought here and an immediate teleport back in the lane. This is actually really interesting for Trace. He's going for a very early recall just because he had the gold off of shoving the wave. And using teleport, he'll be able to get back to the lane. So essentially he's saying, look, my teleport is a more valuable uh, skill used early so that I can get this itemization and continue to press my advantage. Because to be fair versus LOL Bunny, uh, with as quickly as Trace pushes, she's not going to be able to make it back to base without losing a fair amount of CS. You can see uh, some decent uh, Tormented Soil is going down there. Not only healing Trace up thanks to that 10% spell vamp, but uh, oh, nice dodge there by Lol Bunny. She's actually been doing a really good job at, you know, avoiding getting hit by these Dark Bindings. She's avoided, I think, 3 out of 3, 4 out of 4 so far, I believe. Will be at least attempting to go back to base, but if she goes back to base right now, Trace is going to. You can see him grouping up the wave so he can land a sick tormented soil onto all seven creeps, given that that was a cannon minion. Doesn't actually lose any CS to turret. We'll come back in the lane with a. Uh, ooh, that's a crystalline flask. So going for a little bit more of the sustain focus here. And what's interesting to see about that is that, you know, traditionally you'd expect Jarvan to go for, you know, a very aggressive, I'm just going to run at your face and kill you idea with maybe a lot of long swords or Doran's blades early. But just wanting to assure that she has enough mana to uh, sustain in the lane versus probably taking a few creeps from these waves, as well as the ability to continue to use as many dragon strikes as possible. Trace once again missing that Dark Binding, that's going to start to really hurt him. He took a Martial Cadence to the face, which does mean taking a little bit of extra magic damage. Interestingly enough, I was thinking about you know, Jarvan the Fourth and the amount of magic damage that he deals, and it's primarily, uh, primarily from his Martial Cadence. I remember looking at my death recap after dying to a Jarvan, thinking to myself, how on earth did he deal that much magic damage to me when he's a... You know, primarily physical damage dealing champion. There we go. There's a dark binding to hit, but the follow-up on the trace has not put points into his dark or into his black shield at this point. So takes so many auto attacks and ooh, look at that dragon strike landing on a trace. That play alone might have lost trace this game. Now, of course, granted his all-in potential is actually pretty huge. Triple Doran's ring, setting him at 75 ability power. He landed a dark binding right now. Could have kill potential. There is the uh, Soul Shackles forcing the whoa flash out from Bunny, not wanting to take Tormented Soil damage afterwards. Of course, saving the Dark Bunny until after the Soul Shackles has latched might have been a little bit of a better idea, or at least having the ability to land it at all. Uh, something that Trace has been struggling with uh, so far. That does represent an ultimate use there for Trace, and of course, hitting level 6, oh, there's a Dark Binding! Golden Aegis will not save you, and in fact, Golden Aegis, uh, a skill that will never get full effectiveness this game, uh, just because it does scale up as far as, you know, the amount of shield that it gives you, compared, or depending on how many enemy champions are around you. Of course, there will be only one or zero in some cases, if you land the Dark Binding at long enough range. It's not going to help you very much. Dark Bidings, uh, you know, missing them all game long up until this point, but when it counts, uh, really hitting them. And now Trace ahead, not only in the CS department, about 11 CS ahead. 
but Jarvan will be forced back to base and Law Bunny won't be able to come back into lane without using teleport, or at least, you know, immediately. It does not have teleport available, so it's going to be a long, arduous trek back into lane. Whereas Trace both has teleport and the ability to, uh, you know, take a leisurely trip back to lane if he so desires. What's the build? It is a cloth armor. So Trace at this point just saying, look, I don't want to die. All I have to do is stay alive. I'll have this in the bag. Uh, I don't think it's going to be quite that easy. Ooh, even using a dark binding just to see us a cannon minion there. Completely worth it. Although I don't honestly think that he'll actually be able to put that cannon minion gold to use because we're starting to get up there in CS counts. We're already at 70 CS. We're only eight minutes into the game. This is some pretty incredible CS numbers being put up by Trace. And especially for a top laner, that's actually pretty impactful uh, to be a top laner and be able to CS that well. When every little CS counts. When every CS counts, it's Trace who lands the, uh, I don't know, auto attacks to take those CS down. It's my uh, epic movie trailer voice for, uh, for the Solo King tournament. Dark Binding, nice snipe attempt there. And at this point, Trace recognizes and I'm pretty sure Lol Bunny understands this point as well. Uh, it's gonna be a time for all inning pretty soon and uh, interesting to see Trace, you know, not actually using uh, a black shield at all. You block a lot of damage from Martial Cadence or at least from the uh, uh, the Damasian Standard early on. Wouldn't be a terrible point to put in there but just going for the duration on Dark Binding and of course the points it's tormented soil to be able to continue uh, to shove that wave which is primarily what has gotten him this, uh, this 18 CS advantage which uh, I don't know how many ways you want to slice that. 80 CS at you know, 9.5 minutes in a 1v1. Nothing to uh, shake a stick at. Never understood that metaphor so if somebody else wants to help me out with that I don't know, but at least for the time being, as far as League of Legends is concerned, something I understand slightly better than, <laughs> than metaphors. Trace, oh my god, goes in with a dark binding, baits it out, he's just like, you know, I hope you're ready to dodge, ready to dodge, ready to, and then he still hits it, so. Trace at this point, uh, you know, I'm not sure if he's really looking to, you know, pick up a Chinese job or anything, but oh man, might be a uh, kill potential, no. Just. Just kidding. Crisis averted. Also, I think I just said Hachani when uh, their support player is Che. It's Hachani. Haha. -ha. Not quite. But uh, yeah, the uh, the play here by Trace, not necessarily inspired. It's kind of slow and steady wins the race or wins the trace here as one more dark or oh, one more tormented soil after another. And closer and closer to this 100 CS mark. And I think at this point, Law Bunny has to be getting a little bit desperate knowing that in just a mere 6 CS. She will lose the game. She's heading back to base for a quick buy off of teleport, but going back to base at this point in the game is actually just going to lose it for her. This wave coming in represents victory condition. I think she's actually just going to give the win here over to Trace. You'll be killing that CS. One, two, and two more CS. One more CS, and oh, he's one CS short. Trace, one CS short of winning the game. If Law Bunny doesn't go for it now, Game's over. Do it now, lol bunny. There she is walking up the lane looking for a knockup. One CS away from victory. See if Trace can lock this one down. Dark binding and there we go. 100 CS versus 81 and very anticlimactic, but still a victory nonetheless. Trace represents uh, or demonstrates rather very impressive CS mechanics in the face of lol bunny. We'll take down game number one. One of our final best threes of the night. It's kind of a mystery how the I am Athena players would would uh, you know fare versus some of the best players in uh, in cha in champions this season. So, uh, as currently uh, have not been able to pick up a win, but uh, you know at least in some situations have demonstrated the the, the right idea. Uh, behind some of their champion choices. So, uh, for Jarvan, uh, I don't think we saw one Cataclysm that game from Wall Bunny, which, uh, you know, probably should have seen come out at least once. Teleport making all-ins a little bit less successful, so maybe just wanting to farm it up, but when you're behind, you're 
probably going to have a bad time in that department. So unfortunately, Lol Bunny will uh, will lose her first match of this best of three, and that means that it will be up to Trace to close out one more game for advancing on to uh, I guess the finals of at least this part of the bracket. In case you guys are looking for more information on the brackets, of course, you can head over to either lol.esportspedia.com or just to Zubu TV. Of course, there will be a lot of uh, a lot of content being written about that, just to let you guys know how the brackets stand after the first week of competition. Trace will advance uh, to uh, to face Arrow or Lol Bunny with a nice comeback of her own. Will advance to face. Uh, Arrow. Either way, Arrow awaiting the winner of this best of three matchup in the finals. We'll go ahead and hop into champion picks and bans Morgana. An immediate ban there from Lol Bunny. Definitely, uh, you know, having, after having lost a game to Traces Morgana, I'm gonna take it out off the field. And uh, of course, a respect ban there on Lol Bunny's Jarvan as well. Both players, you know, showing some good manners and banning out each other's uh, champion pool. And yeah, to be honest, the champion pool for Lol Bunny, uh, not exactly all that huge. We haven't seen her play uh, all that many champions, uh, just because she isn't playing in champions. Uh, she's playing in the uh, the Lol Ladies League with the other uh, female teams. And uh, if you guys haven't had a chance to watch that, Google Lol Ladies League. It's uh, definitely worth a shot at watching. There's some uh, some really uh, decent games. We'll talk about uh, champion picks now that we're done with bands. The cannon ban. They're from, uh, from Lol Bunny. Not necessarily something I would have expected. Uh, cannon used to be actually like, really, really good at 1v1. Season 2, Cannon kind of ruled the top lane, but unfortunately are not in Season 2 anymore. And while Cannon might be coming back a little bit, seen it a couple times in EU LCS, hasn't necessarily made its mark in a huge, excuse me, competitive way. Lock in here, probably going to be an Annie pick. Nothing too crazy uh, by, about, about the Annie, but definitely uh, definitely counterable. And with second pick here for Trace, uh, really large advantage being able to second pick your, your champion because not only do you get to go with, uh, with a counter pick, you get the opportunity to still pick a champion that's strong in lane. So Annie locked in. What will be the choice here for Trace? See if he goes for oh Scion. He'd just be going for a little bit of tankiness. Uh, I would have looked at something along the lines of maybe a Sivir for the uh, spell shields of the Incinerate, or in case you think they're just going to come more often, uh, uh, maybe something like uh, I want to see Trundle uh, reassure. So much lane sustain off of creeps dying, uh, but at least for the time being, it will be a Scion game number two. Match point for Trace, if he is able to win this matchup, Scion versus Annie. Of course, range versus melee, always difficult to deal with, but... Scion, kind of an unstoppable juggernaut as far as that top lane is concerned. Not afraid to force a, uh, to force a fight. Now, uh, keep in mind, Scion's passive does mean that he is allowed to run around and deal damage, and his death is not counted until the passive actually expires, so... A little bit like Karthus and his death to five, with the exception that it's single target and he can, uh, you know, move and auto attack. So at least for the time being, we're going to see the uh, second champions locked in for uh, for both players. And we should actually get a chance to check out the uh, the runes and masteries for both of these uh, players. For Lol Bunny, uh, kind of representing the uh, the pride of I am. Athena coming in here. Let's check out Trace's runes first. On Scion, probably just looking for a lot of tank stats. So you can see uh, armor seals with... Uh, actually, I believe that is... Uh, Health per, is that health per level? Armor per level, I believe that is. Should be magic resistance, uh, flat MR there, but if you actually look, Trace is specced into a little bit of ability power, as moves do scale off of that, and of course, oh look, he actually put points in rejuvenation, um, in the defense tree, so this is gonna be a 9-21-0 Scion. 
course, we'll be reducing damage from area of effect spells. So that actually is going to be pretty effective versus Annie. It's going to stop Timber's damage. And of course, every time she throws out the uh, the E, it's going to stop that as uh, stop that as well. Health per level in yellows. Uh, I'm not sure why you would go with per level runes when it's a game that's primarily going to be decided in the early game. Uh, 21 9 0. Uh, hmm, some extra points spread out in places you wouldn't necessarily expect to see them. Uh, specifically, uh, I believe it was. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the, uh, of the, uh, the mastery point that uh, that Law Bunny just used. Uh, I believe it was Exposed Weaknesses. Yeah, she put a point in Exposed Weaknesses, and Exposed Weaknesses actually only gives a debuff. It gives a debuff to your opponent that helps your allies deal additional damage to him, but you don't actually um, have any allies to deal additional damage, so I think that's a, a point wasted in the Offense Mastery Tree. There for Lol Bunny, but at the same time, we've seen several players uh, run points in frenzy without any uh, additional critical strike chance. So uh, it's, it goes both ways. Let's put it that way. But for the time being, that is going to do it for our uh, champion picks, bands, runes, and masteries for both Lol Bunny and Trace. And that means that it's time to head into game number two so we'll get this game underway here in just a minute thank you guys for watching this is the solo king 1v1 korean tournament here of course brought to you on azubu tv stick around we'll be right back with game two Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Solo King. This is a uh, 1v1 tournament, of course, brought to you here on Azubu TV, featuring all of your favorite players from this season of Champions. My name is Rapid, and we'll be... Whoa! Uh, okay, I th thought, for <laughs> thought for a second that was Lol Bunny flashing, but uh, your players today will be Lol Bunny, a team from uh, I Am's female roster, I Am Athena, facing off against Trace. Top laner for uh, for Jin Air. Now uh, the Green Wings enjoying a little bit of success this season of Champions. They're currently ranked second, whereas I am uh, I think currently third from the uh, the bottom of the rankings. Uh, and while I am Athena may be doing very very well in their LOL Ladies League, we'll see how well they face off against some of the best players from Champions. And at least up until this point, uh, you know the I am Athena squad has been unable to pick up any wins. But you have to play games in order to uh, in order to win them. We'll see if Lol Bunny's uh, teleport ignite Annie is good enough to take out Janair Trace's uh, teleport ignite Scion. Uh, I have no idea why you would bring ignite on Scion unless you're looking for a kill and maybe some additional confidence coming in here from Trace. Uh, one of the reasons that I'm I would say that you don't have to take or that you shouldn't probably take ignite is just because the only way that Annie. It's going to kill a Scion is in, say, the first six levels or so. If Scion is ever able to go back to base and buy a Spirit Visage, Annie just sort of, like, you know, sits around and doesn't really do a whole lot. And then the, uh, the, the bigger question mark for me is in his Boots Potions start for Lol Bunny. Um, the Boots, boots and Pots means that you're, you're looking to either avoid a certain spell like that... Triumphant Roar, not necessarily triumphant quite as much there, and uh, you have to avoid that. You have to put this extra move speed to use, and uh, the, the bigger problem, at least for right now, all right, that's two out of two on that, and already the entire minion wave pushing in. That's uh, four out of uh, five out of six minions. It's just there by Trace, actually pretty decent. But the problem with Annie is that you have to find some way of continuing to uh continuing your harass 
and I don't think that that's actually going to be very viable with no additional form of mana regeneration. So, for Lol Bunny, she's not going to get mana back passively from a Doran's Ring. She's not going to get mana back actively from a Doran's Ring. And of course, no consumables of any kind uh, will be restoring mana. First trip back to base may yield some sort of mana regeneration, but uh, at this point, it's... Uh, it's going to be uh, kind of a dangerous situation, dropping down very, very low in the mana department. Okay, well, they use those fireballs to CS relatively decently with, but you can tell Trace just way on top of this lane. He is dictating the pace. At every step of the way. Uh, just shoving the wave in. Doesn't have to worry about being ganked, because of course it is just a 1v1. Using, uh, even coming into lane with a mana potion, that's not something you'd necessarily expect uh, from a melee versus ranged matchup. Usually as the melee player, you want more health potions because you recognize you're going to get harassed down early on. But really all Trace cares at this point is just shoving the wave. If he takes damage, if he takes harass from any, then, you know, so be it. He's always going to have the ability to, uh, to shove the wave out, go back to base, and... Uh, be able to buy any sort of tank item that he's looking for. It is a 921-0 uh, matchup here versus Lol Bunny's Annie. So definitely something to keep an eye on. Now, uh, already uh, just looking to shove out this wave as quickly as possible. I think Trace recognized he does have a brief moment where he can shove out the wave, uh, you know, shove it into turret, deny a little bit of gold experience, even with this teleport back. Only with a Doran's Ring and Potions here, uh, Lol Bunny definitely far behind, at least from what Trace is going to be able to buy. Picks up a Doran's Shield, love the item. Unfortunately, I believe it is actually bugged on this patch to where it does not give any additional health regen. It just blocks damage from auto attacks, so may not actually have been all that effective of an item. Another good reason to pick Scion here for Trace is that once you hit level 6, you can actually just use your ultimate to get back in the lane. Same situation for Rek'Sai. We've already seen one of them to, uh, you know, as as one way of, you know, attempting to get back in the lane really quickly. I never actually got to use that, if I recall correctly. But at least for the time being, uh, yeah, maybe a little bit of trouble here for Lol Bunny as uh, you know, continuing to get shoved underneath the turret. Tied in CS though, and that's actually the impressive thing is that Lol Bunny has managed to stay even on CS. We're CSing with fireballs. Actually made a lot easier now that they does reduce the uh, the cooldown by half. But at the same time, uh, you know, good CS is good CS no matter who gets it or where it is. to focus mostly on last sitting here just to make sure that she doesn't fall behind. Lol Bunny is um, actually doing a terrible job at last sitting under turret. Only down by one CS at this point. That is very impressive and you know granted fireballs are going to help with that but at the same time not something that you'd necessarily expect from an Annie who's been you know completely bullied around the entirety of this lane phase. No more consumables here for the Annie, uh, must have, uh, I don't know, uh, given away, used them all, at least by now, even that Crystalline Flask, whoa, those, Roar of the Slayer, almost gonna be a Slayer, oh man, gonna go all underneath the turret, looking for the all-in, the underneath the turret, Trace could have even died there and still picked up the kill, but Gonna hit the roar of the Slayer, and at this point, he sees a low health Annie, decides to go for it, turns on the Onslaught, hits the area of effect of it, and at this point, as long as he doesn't get stunned and die under turret, possible turnaround potential with a nice stun landing there, but Trace was able to pick up game number two, 2-0 victory over Lol Bunny.
That means that Trace will be your victor in this best of three series, advancing 2-0. He'll actually face off against, uh, I believe it was Arrow from KT. You guys are big KT fans, you should be. Arrow and, uh, you know, I guess KT as a whole uh, have been the team that have won the most matches so far for their team in the Solo King. So, definitely something to a, uh, a team, an organization to, uh, to keep an eye on. Like yesterday, uh, both Someday and Nagne won both of their matches, and then Hachani won his match as well. Whereas today, we have, uh, you know, only had Arrow win his matches. Of course, we have yet to see if he can actually advance over Trace. To become the, uh, the Solo King, at least, of, uh, of Group A2. We had Group A1 being played, uh, about a week ago. So, first week, we're actually gonna head off to a quick commercial break, so 